Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be talking about the um, 14 win conditions in Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. So right now I'm going to be over, going over my um, number 14, which is number 88 gimmick puppet of uh, Leo. Um, so it has a win condition where uh, you detach some material to put a destiny counter on this card. And you have to do it three times and you also have to have no spell and trap cards in your uh, um, sp uh, spell and trap card zone when you activate the effect. And you require free level 8 monsters. So the win condition, very easy to disrupt, hard to get off. And you have to allow him to be on the field with your opponent not using any kind of gates. And so that's why he's at number 14. And so for number 13, it's a uh, Heracleck, the uh, creator of light. So you might be asking, why did, am I putting this card this low on the list as the um, worst um, win condition card? Um, in order to get the win condition, all you have to do is special summon this card. In order to special summon this card, all you have to do is um, let is uh, tribute. Oblix the Tormentor, Slife for the Sky Dragon, and the Winged Dragon of Ra with, and make sure it is those monsters because the card's original names have to be those cards. So, in any normal duel, you're, if you're already summoning all three Egyptian God cards, you probably had already won the duel, so this is more of a, like, a hyper win more card, so I don't really think you're ever going to pull it off in a real game set, so that's why it's number 13. Um, so the next card here for um, number 12 is um, Plasmo Spiral Assault. So this thing has two effects. Um, it's um, bans from the graveyard effect is um, it protects a pl pa Plasmo Spiral Dragon from being destroyed. It, no, normal monster from being destroyed by card effect or by battle. So that's not horrible, but getting into graveyard would be a little bit difficult if it's wouldn't be a pure brick in your hand or in your deck. Um, so how do you get um, the wind condition? Well, in order to get the wind condition, what you need to do is you need to um, have a plasma spiral dragon, destroy three monsters in battle while equipped with free spell cards. So the interesting thing is the um, spell cards um, Oh, the free spell cards have to be different names of spiral plasms, and they only have free cards. And how the plasma spiral works a lot of times is when they inflict damage, you get to special summon another plasma spiral from your deck, and it also um, equips to that card. Um, so it's not horrible, but it's not really real condis uh, realistic to use it. And also, they have 29 attack points each, so it's just really more likely for you just to OTK your opponent than to ever win by this win condition effect. Since none of them like help church each other out, give, and they don't even give individual protection effect other than with this card. So with that, this card is pretty horrible. And without further ado, let's go to number 11, Flying Elephant. So. Um, we're almost at the real uh, top 10 list that you guys enjoy top 10s, but um, here number 11, Flying Elephant. So how does uh, Flying Elephant work? Um, it has to be destroyed by an opponent's card effect dur during your opponent's turn, and then it prevents itself from being destroyed. And after that, if um, your next turn, if it gets to attack directly, you win the duel. Um, so this is very unlikely because your opponent has to play something like, um, Regeki or, uh, Torrential Tribute and not notice read this card effect. So, very unrealistic, probably never getting off. There are ways to force it, but it's still, don't rely on it to win you the game. The reason why it still is, um, this high is it is a level, uh, 4 monster. And it's a beast type, so it's not horribly able to summon. And at the end of the day, it's not the worst card out of all of these so far. Now, without further ado, let's start the actual top 10. So number 10 is Exodia, Master of the Guard. Um, so why am I putting this card in number 10? Um, well, his name is Exodia, so he actually has um, support with Exodia cards. Um, like... 
there is a trap card that allows you to send him from your deck. He's a level 10, so he has um, work with um, Mount of the Bound Creator. And you can either tribute him with two monsters or five. Um, he gains the attack and defense of all the monsters used to tribute summon him. Um, kind of similar to a uh, card, uh, what, what was it? Um, the Machu Gar sets and uh, the Wing Dragon Rod anime effect. And his um, win condition effect is if you tribute five monsters and he battles a dark fiend monster that was um, originally owned by your opponent, you win the duel. Um, not the hardest to win condition because the danger archetype exists and allows you to do it. But without the um, danger archetype, you would definitely never see it because you have to do Rift of Darkness and um, Lair of Darkness in order to pull it off. So... Not the worst, just incredibly situational. Um, so now for number uh, nine is Ghost Trip Angel uh, Mystic. So this card is actually really good in the sense that it only requires two level fours, but you're probably never summoning it that way unless you're going for the OTK build um, with its um, win condition. So how do you get its win condition? Um, it has to have 10 XYZ materials attached underneath it to win the duel. Um, that's not really the most hardest thing to pull off and it's very realistic. Um, its effect is you can actually um, rank it up on top of a ghost trick um, XYZ monster so you can make it have free. Um, and then you can detach some material to search a Ghost Trick spell or trap card. And since all the um, other free Ghost Trick XC um, material monsters have the effect of when they go to the graveyard, add another Ghost Trick um, card from your graveyard to your hand, you can actually use a solid plus two. So this card is more competitive on its um, uses more than its uh, gimmicky win condition. So for our uh, number eight card is FA Winners. Um, so if you control an FA monster, your opponent can't destroy this with a uh, card effect. Um, in order for you to get its win condition off, you have to have an FA monster who is nine levels higher than his original starting level. And then after that, FA Winners have to ban his free FA field spells with different name. Now it doesn't have to be the same one, like... FA winners, you can have one do it, and then another FA winner do it, and then another one. Um, but it does come with the downside of you can only do this banish once per turn. So, very inconsistent. Like, with the nine levels higher, have to deal battle damage. Um, then you have to get all three of them with a different name. Just not realistic at all, but I mean, it is a more... Um, likely win condition than some of these other cards. So without further ado, let's go into number seven, Venaga, the deity of poisonous snakes. Um, this card is not too bad. It actually is immune to everything, and it cannot be targeted. So um, actually very impressive for an old card. Um, to summon it, it's kind of hard. You have to use uh, Rise of the Deity Snake, and um, also have to um, have a um, venomous ben uh, the um, king of poisonous snake die by card effect. Um, so how do you get a win condition? A deity had to deal battle damage three times, and also it had to not be destroyed or because the counters go on itself. So you have to stay on the field. Um, it's hard to do, but it is very realistic because all you have to really do is play Black Garden with this card. And then even at 1,500 attack points or 1,000, you will still be able to gain your opponent and win the duel. So, um, impossible, no. Realistic, yes. Um, practical, no. So, with that, let's go into the next. And now for our number six card um, is Exodus, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. Um, this card is already um, played because of his um, special summon um, mechanic and the fact that he's a level 10. Um, so his um, effect, kind of going to go over the whole effect. 
to just kind of explain for you guys because it's a little bit complicated. So, if you have a mantra in your graveyard, you can return um, all your mantras in your graveyard back to your deck and suffer your deck to special summon this card. Um, that's his summoning condition, his con so it's actually cost to uh, return the cards back. When he attacks, you allowed to mill a mantra from your hand or your um, deck to the graveyard. His utter effect is he gains a doubt and attack points for every normal mantra in your graveyard. And if he sends all the uh, for uh, five different name forbidden one cards, you win the duel. Um, so how you can kind of do it, some um, win condition is um, turn one is summon him, play defuse and wave motion. And your opponent have enough uh, mantras for you to attack. He can attack five times. You win the duel. Um, he doesn't have to deal damage. He just has to attack five times. Um, the other thing is he's also used more in a win condition where you're like um, doing um, advanced ritual art, so you can get ten um, normal mantras in the graveyard. So he's at ten thousand attack points, and you win the duel. So with that, that's why he's at number six. Now for number five is Final Countdown. Um, now, I'm not putting these cards on because of their past history. I'm more of doing current and past as um, my assessment. So my explaining of Final Countdown is you have to pay 2,000 life points, so you're going to put yourself at 6,000. Then you have to survive 10 of your opponent turns to win the duel. That's not very realistic, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! when the card game had gotten so fast and people can OTK on such a consistent basic. I honestly think even if this card came out free, it would be very unlikely to be able to win, like, for example, Final Countdown versus um, Salman Greats. They're going to, uh, they're going to roar your things face down, they're going to negate it, and then they're going to OTK you. So let's go to number four is number C88 Gimmick Puppet of Disaster Leal. Um, so why is this card so low? Uh, because it's actually a win condition, it's actually not too hard to play. Um, if we ever get K Rank of Magic Asian Force back, it will become a lot more viable and realistic. But as I said, I'm not ranking these cards off of current viability. So we'll go into that um so all you have to do is rank up a c88 um now even without agent force which agent force made it a lot easier to win because you could rank up c80 rank up 88 to c um 107 then revive 88 because gimmick puppets are actually one of the deck that have an in theme monster reborn um card so and then you could again rank them up again and all since you have one car or as x y z material this win condition will be almost online immediately so let's go into the win condition um he cannot be targeted by card effects and his other effect is you can detach one material to inflict one thousand to your opponent and if your opponent has two thousand life points or less while this card has no x y z materials you win the duel so, that's actually is very easy and usable, and this means your opponent is playing where if they're a little bit closer to their life point total without, they automatically lose. So, with that, that's why I'm giving this card number four. So, with number three, uh, it's going to be Jackpot 7. Um... Now, this is one of those cards I feel like I have to explain a little bit of why it's number three. Um, to get its win condition, all you really need to do is Skako, Hippo Tokens, so that is seven cards, and you have to give your opponent a dark level three warrior monster, who is um, actually decently searchable, um, and to give it to your opponent, which you have nine ways of three ways of doing that so you have nine cards one does from the graveyard and two does from the field so it's a really simple win condition how you do it is if 
all three jackpot sevens are destroyed by your opponent card effect and sent to the graveyard they are then banished and when they when all three of them are banished this way you win the duel so going into number two which is destiny board um now why is this card number two um there you there's now a card called a dunch sanctuary which allows you to Play the spirit message cards into your um, monster card zone so if you actually ever have two destiny boards they can actually go being played side by side by each other and you will win the duel in two turns so one of the fastest um reliable win condition and it is so stoppable but your opponent still has like literally just a couple of turns to even try to do anything to stop it um, worth mentioning as a good combo, but as I said, it's probably not going to be them. None of these win condition cards really win you games outright. And for number one, which will come to a surprise as no one, as you, if you've been keeping track, as there is only one card missing, is Exodia the Forbidden One. Um, so why is this card still number one, even though it is the first one ever released? Well, in order to get his win condition, all you have to do is get five cards in your hand or in, in order to win. Um, four of those cards are normal monsters, which um, normal monsters are one of those um, types of cards that has like a massive amount of support. Like one of the really good ones, um, Backup Squad, which allows you to return three normal monsters from your um, graveyard. Um, then we also have... The um, Exodia Trap card that lets you uh, send them um, to the graveyard or bounce a monster, and then they have their new level 10 that's unaffected by stuff that um, returns to your hand and then lets you draw by revealing Exodia. So, with all of Exodia support and then just so many draw engines allowing it to still have an FTK, even with five cards. Definitely had to deserve and cemented a spot as number one. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. You have a great day. Tell me if you have any comments or suggestions on this. Bye.